how are you guys doing today? It's Wednesday, and that means it's NFPT Live Day. I am Beverly Hosford. This is Aaron Nitschke. We are broadcasting live for the National Federation of Professional Trainers, NFPT, which is a personal training and certification company. We also provide a continuing education and we like to support our personal trainers any way that we can. We write blogs, we film videos, we'll get on the phone with you, whatever you need. So today uh, we're going to be talking about getting more clients. And one of the ways to get more clients is to meet more people. And that's not always so easy for all of us because especially like if you're kind of a more introverted person, it can be tough to want to meet people. And if you're an extroverted person, sometimes you're just so tapped out at the end of the week from working with your clients that you don't want to meet people. And so we're just going to chat all about meeting people today and how to make that more fun and enjoyable. And also because it's the month of Valentine's day, that's kind of why we picked this topic. We're thinking like, you know, about dating or like online dating, you know, it's kind of what you have to do when you want to find clients. So I'm going to go ahead and tweet the show out and put it up on Facebook. If you think anybody that you know would like to learn about this topic, about meeting new people and marketing, then please go ahead and click the share button right now or tag them in the comments and, and get them involved. So how are you today, Erin? I'm good. I'm good. We had a little uh, snowstorm last night, so that's always lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> do I look any different now that you met me in person this what weekend? That? I said, do I look any different to you now that you got to meet me in person this weekend? <laughs> oh, that was so fun. Yes, Bev and I actually got to meet for the first time face-to-face -face this weekend. Um, she surprised me in Billings for my birthday. So, yeah, that was pretty awesome. So it's uh, definitely a gift. And so now we're no longer, I guess, strangers in the sense of being at a distance. Now we really know each other. <laughs> pretty, pretty fun. If you guys awesome. know, we've never met before in person. We've been friends for over a year, like Aaron said. So mm -hmm. I see John is here. Hi, ladies. Hey, John. Hi, John. Myra says, hi, beautiful ladies. Woo. Oh, thank you, Myra. Thank you. Marie says, you guys are so awesome. So yeah, if you're here with us, say hello and like I said, if you think you know someone that is wanting, because the, the biggest question I always get from trainers that I'm trying to help or my business coaching clients, which span lots of different fields, is what's the best way to market myself or what's the best way to network? Or, and, you know, and then I always hear like, I hate networking, I hate marketing. And so I really, I think that, you know, the way we want to really kind of start off today is just by saying like, the most important thing to do when you're meeting people is to do it in a way that resonates with you. Like, and, and, to, and to just do it and be consistent. You know, even if you find a way that resonates with you, it can still be tricky to like get yourself to do that. So um, what we want to do today is help you merge your marketing with your personality and with your interests and make it a lot easier. So we're going to chat a little bit about some, you know, ways that, that we might market. So let's just get started here. So let me just see if anyone else is saying hello before we get started. So Gail says hello, and okay. Billy's here from NFPT headquarters. Great, awesome. So, all right, here we go. So let's let's start. So like, there's two main ways to network these days. There's meeting people online and meeting people in person. So tell me in the comments, do you prefer to meet people online? Or do you meet, prefer to meet people in person or both? And my, why don't you tell me, Erin? Why don't you tell me what you like? You know, <clears throat> I think it depends on who I'm trying to target. Um, you know, like just when I think about the geographically isolated area in which kind of you and I both live, um, sometimes it's easier to go the online route, mm -hmm. uh, especially like, you know, just like what I did with you. I watched a, a great class that you put on for idea and you fortunately had your email at the end. I just was like, this girl is awesome. She's <laughs> boss lady. I want to, I want to meet this girl. So, you know, I reached out to you via email. Um, I think as a writer, it's easy for me to be able to connect through, through email when I'm at a distance. Um, that might not be somebody else's forte, but so if it's, 
if I'm not at a conference or I'm not, you know, at a workshop or something like that, I've reached out to people just via email, like, you know, Amanda is another person or Sandy at idea is another person that I've just connected with through email. Um, but I don't mind the face to face either. It's just the opportunities for something like that are a little more limited where we are versus like if we lived in, in maybe a larger area. So I could I could go either way. But I think it depends on you know where I'm at at the time and really what the purpose of of it is. OK, that's that's a really great blend. Yeah. So you guys that are watching, which one do you prefer in person, online or both? I mean, I think intuitively I like in person for sure. Mm -hmm. But you and Myra, two of my best mama friends that I met this year, I met you both virtually before in person. And so I have to say it's very beneficial, but I gen genuinely crave that in-person meeting. However, I definitely am resistant a lot of times to like getting myself out there and meeting people because it, it can be nerve wracking. So that's, that's one thing to think about, like, you know, if you want to meet some new people or get new clients this year, would you rather do it online or would you rather do it in person? And so, and maybe you want to do a little bit of both. The second thing that we had talked about when you're kind of like trying to figure out how to meet people and what's the best way for you is there's that whole idea of like one-on-one -on -one or small group. So right, right. I feel like some people are better, like you said, Aaron, like, maybe reaching out to someone that they like or like finding someone and connecting with them. Whereas others feel more comfortable going into a room with a bunch of strangers and sifting the right through. Now I haven't met very many people that like that, but I'm curious, uh, those of you that are watching, do you like meeting people one-on-one -on -one or do you like meeting people in a group setting? Like what's your, your preference there? And while I don't really like the group setting, I do I do like going, one thing I like doing is going to a, like a class or a seminar on a topic, like go to a free class at the library or go to a free class at the hospital and being in a small group of like-minded people, there's no pressure to like network, mm -hmm. but I might sit next to somebody who I spark up a conversation with. We already have something in common, but going to like those big networking events, like the Chamber of Commerce happy hour or whatever, oh gosh, just put them no. It, put a sheet over my head and like, <laughs> knock me out like no so I think knowing where you what kind of settings you thrive in is really important so for me going to a class and like getting educated on something like we're learning and we're networking is great but if I'm going to an event that's just networking mm -mm. yeah I'm with you on that I I feel like there's less pressure when you're in that learning setting you know, and you're all like kind of there because you've got maybe a similar interest, but maybe a different purpose for being there. And yeah, if it's just a socialization thing, no, no, I like I'm I'm fine with that with my friends, but I just it just makes me uncomfortable. I feel like my attention is way too fractured and and in this direction and that direction that I can't I can't stay focused. It's like it overstimulates my brain and then I'm like, I'm out of here. I can't I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of in defense, like almost in defense mode, like yeah, like you're being attacked because there's always that weird guy that comes up to you. Yeah, <laughs> our viewer, we've got lots of comments coming up here. John says it depends on the context of the meeting. Cold calling people is not my favorite. Social mm -hmm. meetings are my favorite. I would love to meet someone who likes cold calling. I think I think I have actually. I've really? met a very few people that like cold calling, <laughs> but oh. social meetings are my favorite. Sweet. Billy says, I prefer in person. You can see someone's body language, but I definitely do both. Myra sure. says, I think introverts prefer online connections. Yeah, that, that could be possible. Introvert. Yeah. I just wonder, like, introverts, though, do they like being with people at all? Or <laughs> I'm just not really sure because I'm definitely more extroverted by nature, but I do need to take a break sometimes. Yeah. Um, Billy says, great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. <laughs> Thanks. Really cool. Here we go. Gail, when I meet people who know me, neighbors, for example, it's weird to pitch personal training. I prefer the in-person meeting and like your idea to attend a casual course with like-minded folks. Easier to market. Yeah, it's like definitely, definitely don't want to go out there with the intention to network or the intention to like sell something. No. That's why I like going to a class and just 
you know, I'm just going to the class. I happen to do this. Whereas if you go with that intention, then there's the potential for disappointment. Like if you don't sell it and people can, they can taste the sales on your breath when you're right. They can taste the, the desperation and greed. No. <laughs> well, this is where I find it akin to dating. So when my friends ask me like, how did you meet Carl? Or I want to meet a guy. And I'm like, honestly, I was just doing what I enjoy. Like I went skiing, you know, and I met him on this trip and then we got into rock climbing and you just, you just do what you like. Like you met your husband at the gym, right? You were doing what, doing what you like. So yeah. I feel like it's the same way with meeting new clients. Like you gotta be out there doing what you like. And then when you're doing what you like, you're vibrant. And when you're vibrant, people are attracted to you. And when they're attracted to you, they're more interested in what you do for a living. And, and people usually buy trainers because of their personality anyway. Like they definitely want you to be knowledgeable. They expect that, but I feel like usually There's people chemistry, I think just, just like a chemistry that you have with your friends or a significant other, or your spouse, it's, it's, really comes down to that chemistry and how well you mesh. And so, yeah, I think you bring up a great point about when, when you're doing what you love, you thrive. And when you thrive, you shine mm -hmm. and, and people see that it's, you can't, you can't hide it when you're doing something you love. But if you're in a situation where you're uncomfortable internally, but you're externally trying to portray that you're not <laughs> an intuitive person will pick up on that. And, yeah. and then you won't you won't be thriving because you won't be in that environment that allows you to shine. Um, that said, I do think that comfort is the natural killer of progress. And so I think sometimes we have to stretch a little bit, mm -hmm. be a little bit uncomfortable, but don't dive in head first to a situation that you've never been in before without, you know, maybe taking some active steps before that to kind of warm up. Right. Um, and do something that just maybe makes you stretch a little bit that makes you slightly uncomfortable, but still gives you enough nervous energy that you can use it as good energy. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's, that was what I was saying in the beginning. Like, so yeah, we want to do things that are enjoyable and we want to network in a way that's enjoyable, but you do have to step outside your comfort zone a little bit. Like when I met Carl, which he's not a client, he's my husband, but I always tell my friends this, when I met Carl, I got invited on a ski trip. And I got invited, but I couldn't go the same day as everyone else. So I had to like get a ride and I had to get a ride with these two people that I never met. And basically like I had to drive an hour and a half North and hang and go to these people's house. I never met and ride in the car with them out to mammoth, which was five hours. So I rode in the car with these two people I never met for five hours to go on a ski trip. And I didn't even know I was going to meet my husband on this trip. Right. But like, I had to get outside my comfort zone a little bit, but I was going to do something that I love, which is skiing and, you know, right. getting out of town and whatnot. And it was really nerve wracking sitting in the car. And I had to sit in the car with a cat on my lap and I'm allergic to cats. Usually <laughs> it's like, I get in this car and there's, they're like, do you mind holding the cat on the way out? And I was like, what? wait, what? I, we just met. <laughs> <laughs> it all worked out. Like it was all meant to be. And I remember on the way out, they told me that they had met on a ski trip. And they're like, maybe you'll meet someone. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to meet anybody. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I feel like, you know, that's kind of a far out example because we're talking about meeting clients here. But it's like, I think it goes along with your point. Like, <laughs> you have to be, you have to be willing to be a little uncomfortable and you know, to do things that, and do things that you love. So there's definitely always that balance. <laughs> yeah, essentially, you got to hold a cat. Like, <laughs> You know, like you got to do what you got to do in some like respect. I'm really telling this story right now. And it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm with you. Depending on the group, I can be overwhelmed with anxiety. I'm an introvert working to get out of my shell. For some, it's natural. I wish it was for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely, yeah, not as natural. So for those introverts, yeah, I feel like Myra said, you know, maybe online can be better and there's so many ways to network online like you can you know you can so this is the last point that I wanted to talk about so we talk about like online versus in person we talk about small uh, one person versus group and then there's also the idea this was your idea actually Aaron is do you prefer hosting events and being the leader or do you prefer being an attendee and mm -hmm. so those of you that are introverted you know your personality style like maybe you want to join a bunch of Facebook groups and just hang out in those Facebook groups and get to know people. 
or perhaps you want to start your own Facebook group or start your own club or something. And aside from Facebook groups, I feel like we came up with some other ideas. Uh, you could, you could have an open house at your gym or you could go attend other people's open houses at their gyms. Not that you're going to go client picking, but maybe go and meet some other colleagues or meet some other like-minded people or, you know, networking isn't just about meeting clients. It can also be about meeting other professionals in your field or in a different field. Like I was talking to one of my business coaching clients recently about those booths at the fairs, like where you set up a yeah. booth and some people love them and some people hate them and the people that hate them, but feel like they kind of need to be a part of it. Cause it's a big community event. I tell them just go to the event, like just go yeah. walk around and don't try to sell yourself to the people at the booths, but just walk around and see what happens. And, mm -hmm. and so that's another way to be a part of events. So what do you guys that are watching, do you like to be the, so you introverts, I'm wondering, do you prefer yeah. the host or do you prefer to attend the event? I, I think I already know the answer, but I'm curious. Yeah. What about you, Erin? Do you prefer to be the, the host or attend? I, I'm guessing you're gonna say both. <laughs> yeah, definitely both. I mean, I'm an educator, so in, in a sense, I host something every day, every day for literally 12 months out of the year because I teach in the summer as well. Um, but if it's like a workshop or something like that, I, I enjoy presenting. I enjoy being part of that. Um, we did have a wellness council here a number of years ago and we would do like a wellness festival and I would host a session for, you know, whatever the topic was, or if they asked me to, to host something specific, I would do that. So I, I, I love teaching and whether it's online or it's face to face, that doesn't change for me. Um, and so both, I would say, uh, for sure. Um, if, if there's an opportunity to present or a call for, you know, a teaching opportunity, I'll definitely throw my name in, um, whether I'm selected or not, not really up to me. That's out of my control for the most part. But yeah, it's definitely both for me. And depending on the topic, I mean, if it's something that I know a little bit about, but I really want to get a more in-depth knowledge, I will. I would definitely prefer to attend. Mm -hmm. I am not going to present or write about a topic that I only sort of know about, because <laughs> that's the fastest way to to you know decrease your credibility overall. Um, but yeah, it's a learning opportunity. Yeah. Well, and the one thing I was thinking about, because you and I are probably pretty similar, like we can kind of do both. Like I can attend the event or I can run the event. Like mm -hmm. if the person running the event needs someone to step in, I could probably step in and take over. And yeah. I, my heart goes out to our, I, I hate the word introvert, but like, I guess Meyer brought it up. So our more introverted or less socially inclined friends who are would rather hide at home, but they really love helping people. I just feel like, you know, one thing, just like with anything else, getting back to that, getting outside your comfort zone is, can you think of a time that you did put yourself out there and network and it worked out really well for you? Like you met a new friend or you made a great connection and to just like cultivate that in your mind and remember that, remember that that's how you got there, like, and use that as positive reinforcement. So, yeah. uh, you know, like yeah, I even have a hard time getting myself out. Like I went to a class at the library two weeks ago and it was kind of, it was like kind of tempting to not go to the class and instead just go to a coffee shop and get some work done. But I reminded myself that after classes like that, I feel invigorated. I feel refreshed. I did. I met a really awesome girl at that workshop who maybe might help us with some babysitting and it had nothing to do with work, but you just never know what's going to happen. And so I remind myself of that in the future when another event like that comes up and I say, Hey, last time that actually was pretty fun. And sometimes yeah. you need to like, you know, remind yourself of that. So yeah, I, and I, I, oh. think, I think with the introverts, there's a quiet piece about their personality and their social preferences. Um, and I think for introverts, you can capitalize on that. And you can use that strength. Like they're naturally really good listeners. Mm -hmm. um, they naturally have a lot of things that extroverts don't and vice versa. So, you know, introverts might be really great at finding a niche in virtual coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that is a hugely growing field is online personal training, online health coaching, online business coaching, all of those, those fields. And I think I touched on it a little bit in my trends article. 
um, that I think we're going to see more and more of that and, and less and less of like a face to face. Um, that's never going to go away because you're always going to have that certain segment or that certain population that's going to want that face to face, got to be in the gym, need that, you know, kind of one on one time. But introverts, there's there's a gift that that I think that personality has and, and that could be really beneficial. So yes. I think reminding yourself of your gifts and making a list of like the things that you're really great at, despite being introverted or extroverted. I don't think there's one personality that's better than the other because I tend to vacillate between the two. I mean, there are some days where if there's something going on, like I want to be invited, but just understand I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> I just am not feeling it. It's two people out there. I just want to chill at home by myself. Um, but then there are other days where I'm totally motivated. So I feel like I'm a little bit more of a hybrid personality. So yeah, just remind yourself of your gifts and figure out like, okay, so this is what makes me comfortable. I wonder, I might be a really great trainer or health coach for, for those other introverts out there that, that really fear being in, a one-on-one -on -one setting. Like I have a ton of students that say, I cannot stand going to the gym. I'm intimidated. I don't like it. I don't know how to use the equipment. There's a way around that. There really is. And I, I think, you know, being confident in your gifts versus focusing on the, I'm not so good at socializing or X or whatever you want to insert there, I think can be just a, a motivation that you need um, to, to take that couple extra steps forward. Yeah, that's great. Um, Let's see here. Uh, April jumped in and said, I would prefer to attend. You would not need to deal with the organizational expect. Just go out there and meet and greet. Totally. John says, Bev, you know, I'm a man of few words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John, I'm kind of curious. I've never met John either. I, you yeah. know, I've never met John. I wonder what John's actually like in person. Like, you know, are you quiet? Are you... You know, because online, John is a social butterfly. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. The internet really gives us a platform to kind of grow from. Angie says, I'm an introverted leader. How does that work? I prefer to host as a coordinator and organizer of the event, elevating those that are in the foreground, making sure they're successful because when we're all celebrating that success together at the internal office party for us introverts, <laughs> See, that's why I don't like the word introvert, Angie, because yeah. I feel like it doesn't it doesn't cover the dynamics of you yeah. as a person. There is so much more to you than that word introvert. So I think it's really important to get away from this the word and just know what you like to do. You like to run an event, then run events. And maybe yeah. you organize the event, but you hide at the event. That's totally fine. Like that's totally. I feel like you know, I, I use an open house example sometimes when I'm talking about this. Like, say you're going to run an open house at your gym. There's going to be some of the trainers are going to be really good at marketing and spreading the word about the event. There's going to be some of the trainers that are maybe really good at, like, greeting people at the door. And then there's going to be the people kind of behind the scenes, maybe, like, writing down names and addresses or something. And, and the gym that I used to work at, we had 10 trainers. And I could identify – what, what each trainer would be best at, like, in that role. And I put those people to those tasks. Like, I knew the ones that would go out there and spread the word. And instead of having everybody work on every part of the event, yep. you know, trying to divvy it up that way, I think, is is really important. So if you can think of yourself as that way, like, what, like don't think of yourself as an introvert, but think of yourself as, hey, here's all these ways to network. Which ones are going to make me feel good? But then you still need the consistency piece. It's like, when you, I lived on the beach for five years, like on the beach, like I could walk out my door and the sand was, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, rub it in, Bev. Come on. <laughs> but, and, and people get mad at me when I say this, but I still had to motivate myself to get out my door and go across the street and go on the beach. Like it sounds stupid and you're probably going to call me like spoiled or whatever. But after living there for a few months, I had to like still make myself go out there. So I feel like, yeah, you know, yeah. Figure out what you enjoy, but then you still need <laughs> you still need to be consistent. Yeah, um, yeah. We have lots of comments today. I love it. Angie, there are negatives with each personality type. Introverts are great at working on one on one. Working well one on one is a great way to get referrals. That's one way to get clients. Lean into that. Yeah. Totally. yeah. <laughs> 
And Billy says, I'm usually hesitant to attend events, but once there, I get into my groove. See, that's good to know about yeah, yourself. Yeah. I'm the same way. Gail says, great point about regarding the gifts and connecting with others who share the same personality introverts. Are you being similar to clientele? Yeah. There are clients out there and people out there that they don't want that like extroverted, excited personality as a coach. They want a more calm, uh, encouraging personality. Mm -hmm. Totally. You guys are great. So many awesome points, such a supportive group we have here. <laughs> For sure. I, and I think, you know, like you said in the beginning, it all comes down to knowing what makes you comfortable, but what could, what could you maybe do that's just slightly outside that comfort zone yeah. to help you stretch a little bit? Because like we said before, growth is painful, but you, it's worse to stay in the same spot forever and, and keep your sights on, you know, wishing that, oh, I could do this, wishing I could do that. Maybe you're just wishing for the wrong thing and, yeah. and not, you're not, in tune with what resonates with you the most. And I think sometimes we can all get lost in that, like, oh, I wish I was this person, or I see this famous fitness person, and why am I not like that? Well, that's that's not, honestly, when I think about it, I'm like, I would hate that. <laughs> what am I doing? I mean, I, I think you need to pay attention to what makes you feel good and, and what makes you feel like you are using your gifts you know, versus being stuck in that rut. Um, and, and that I think comes with that relationship with yourself and not focusing on, Oh, I could never go to that event. It would be too yeah. scary. Yeah. There are some events that are scary. There are some things I dread going to like, Oh geez, I really, cause I got to put on real pants and I don't, mm -hmm. I kind of am over that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but yeah. like Billy said, once you're there, you kind of get into your element and you're like, okay, this is cool. It's just like you stepping out onto the beach and still having to make that connection. Same could be said for people that live in the mountains. Yeah. We don't always take advantage of them every day. And then the people that don't live here are like, are you crazy? No, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And there's, there's just so many ways to get creative. Like I think about my, I'm going to mention Myra since she's on here. I know that the way she usually networks, or like meets people, she gives a free consult to people, mm -hmm. which is a really neat way to get to speak with someone one-on-one. -on -one. She can be at home, very comfortable. But the, the, the thing is you have to be able to market that consult or you have to be able to get the other person on the phone. So like you could find a hybrid or creative way where like maybe you're part of an event where you give people those little one-on-one -on -one consults back to back at the end of the, I don't know, or throughout the event or something. Yeah. Like, like your say Myra attends, I don't know, maybe she's at like some events, like uh, I don't, I'm just thinking out loud here, like uh, one of those booth events and maybe she has like a private room or it's like free 15 minute consults and all you got to do is step into the booth and then you get to talk to her in like a private setting, you know, and then that way she could not be at a booth that's like open and everyone's looking at her, but she could be inside of a booth with a cover on it. And it's like, step in, five cents advice or whatever, you know, like the Charlie Brown show. So yeah. I feel like there's just lots of ways to think outside the box, like, you know, to to get yourself out there. We've got some more comments here. Um, let's see, Gail I already put up. John says, I like events because you meet like like minded people. Sounds like John's a social butterfly inside and out. Gail, curious, do the people here hand out business cards? When is a good time to use business cards? Mm. Great question. Great question. Um, you know, if I'm like just going to a coffee shop or doing something like that, I mean, I always carry a stack with me because you never know when the opportunity is going to strike or when you're going to be at an event and people will be like, oh, do you have a card? I've been in situations like that. And it's like getting caught with your pants down. Like, well, yeah, I'm a professional, but I don't have my cards. Like, that can make you look sloppy. At least that's how I felt. Whether or not somebody else perceived that, who knows? Um, nor do I care. But nonetheless, like just always keep a stack with you um, in whatever bag or purse or or whatever you carry. Maybe it's in your car. You know, just a stack to be. I think it's always better to be prepared. Mm -hmm. But like if I'm just going to a coffee shop or something like that, like if somebody asks me about it, like maybe they've seen an article or they've seen something in the paper or something like that, or they've heard it on the radio. Yeah. I'll certainly be like, 
you know, visit, visit my site. Um, let me know if I can help you in any way or point you in the right direction. Um, and it doesn't even so much have to be like a sell, like here, you know, here's a punch card for five, you know, initial sessions at X amount of dollars. But I think, I think that has to, there has to be the right opportunity for it. Um, does that, does that help Gail or what do others think about that? Yeah. Business cards could be a whole show on its own. I mean, I, I always love going, when I go to the co-op in town, I love going over to the business card wall when I'm on my way out. And it's an activity I usually do with my students too. And I'm teaching, I'll walk them over there to look at the wall. Cause there's this wall of business cards. And when you look at it, there's always a few that stand out. And so I would always, so I would encourage you a to make sure you have a card that stands out. So like, go to a wall of business cards somewhere and notice what stands out to you because if you give someone a business card that stands out, they're more likely to keep it, I think. Like they're more likely to bring it home and keep it, especially if it has something intriguing on it. Like I feel like these days business cards are just a way to like give your phone number or like you said, Aaron, it's a way to show that you're professional. But like say you had like a, a really beautiful photo on the card or say you had like a quote that someone wanted to keep. So like the front of the card can have your information and the back could be this beautiful design with a quote. And then that way someone brings it home and they actually put it on their fridge. So right. this card is only as good as how far it makes it. And if they actually follow up and make a phone call from it. And so what I always say to Gail is if you give a business card, get a business card. Do not ever just give yeah. a business card. Um, give your business card and get their phone number or get their email or get their business card. And then you've got to take the initiative to follow up because giving out your business card does not count in the big scheme of points, like for marketing, like what I used to do when I taught too, is I'd take a stack of business cards and I'd be like, here is what happens when you give out your business card. I would throw them up in the air <laughs> and I'd be like, you may as well just do that with them because you could go hand one to each person, but you may as well do that because that's what happens to most business cards. They go home and they land up in a pile. So if you give a business card, think of it as a ticket to admission. Like you give it to them and then you get theirs back or you get their phone number or whatever. Yeah. And I'm kind of with you, Aaron, like where I felt silly if I didn't have one, but sometimes I feel like it's actually, then if there's less pressure, if I'm like, Oh, hey, I don't have any cards on me, but let me give you my email. And would you mind if I got yours too? Because yeah. I'm like, I guess I'm too tuned into marketing sometimes. I sometimes feel like when someone gives you business cards, they're trying to sell you something. But that's because I'm like a marketing mind. <laughs> so. right, exactly. No, that makes complete sense. Um, and I think, you know, it depends on the event that you're at. I mean, if it's a specific networking event, why not? You know, especially if that's something that, that others are doing. I, I think you can get the right feel for the right, the right time and the right venue to send it out. But I think you're right um, to, to make sure that you've got a card that stands out like mine. And I don't know if you can really see it, but I have like my picture right. and I've got um, like my, my name and my credentials, which they actually need to be updated now. Thank you for this question. Cause now I can tell my husband, Hey, Marcus, can you, can you redo this for me? And then on the back, I have like all my, my social links too. Yeah, that's great. I've got my direct personal email. I've got my cell phone. So, um, and it's real simple, but nonetheless, like I think I enjoy getting a business card that's got somebody's picture on it because I feel like then it's a little bit more personal. Totally. Uh, but that could be different. I mean, everybody has their own flavor. Exactly. Something that, you know, they prefer this taste over that. Yeah. So make sure that whatever you design, it reflects who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and, and because that way, when somebody looks at it, the whole goal is for them to feel in the same way with your website or something like that. Their, their whole goal is to feel like they can connect with you. Yeah. Um, so make it, you know, reflective of who you are in, in your, um, in your personal, in your business cards and, and even on your social media links. Yeah, I agree. You at the end of the day, make sure you feel good about your business card for sure. Because when you hand yeah. it out, you want to be excited about it because yeah. they generally like people who are enthusiastic or, you know, that are smiling. So if the, yeah. if the business card kind of makes you feel good, then then give it out. If it doesn't make you feel good to give out a business card and you want to go old school with your email and a piece of paper, I don't think there's any right or wrong way. I think the point of today's episode and the take home message is to really savor who you are and, 
mm-hmm. and do things in a way that that make you feel good. Like don't you don't need to follow any like lists of business rules or anything. You do need to put yourself out there. Nobody is going to come looking for you in your house. So right. you do put yourself <laughs> out there, but put yourself out there in a way that feels good. That's kind yeah. of like, that's the take home message. So before we wrap up, let me just see. Let's see. Angie says, K, okay, I'm going to try taking introvert out of my description of self, but I will use it. It's too peopley out there. Thanks for that, Aaron. <laughs> Maybe I'll never feel like putting on my real pants. <laughs> I'm not introverted. I'm just too comfortable to get. I hope that Be Live uses that as the quote for the uh, like the main image this time. Because that Be Live always takes one of these quotes and puts it up there. I hope they show that one. It sounds yeah. like Neil is happy with the ideas we gave her. And yeah. yeah, we could do a whole episode on business cards at some point. But it really does it does come down to like your business cards to make you happy. Mm-hmm. Mark is watching and he is gonna put it oh. on the list. Because <laughs> I need my other cert on there. I appreciate it. <laughs> really please don't forget to use your NFPT certified badge for your online marketing. Yes. Thanks Billy for that reminder. Yep. John says, handing out business cards for personal training can be a sensitive subject. Sometimes people are offended. Like, do I look like I need personal training? That is a really good. That is an excellent point. Like, it's it's kind of like asking someone when they're due if you don't really know that they're pregnant. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe don't, like, get make things awkward to begin with. <laughs> yeah. That's why sometimes it can be nice to have a newsletter list and just say, like, hey, like, you know, you're talking about something. You're like, hey, I send out newsletters around like these kind of topics all the time, would you want to be on the list? Most people will say, I found most people will say yes. I always feel weird asking that, but almost everybody is like, yes, that would be great. Yeah. And then uh, Myra says, very helpful ladies, thank you. So, Good. awesome. I feel like we covered what we wanted today and um, we're kind of going with this theme this month of like Valentine's Day and love. So this, this episode was all about like how to meet people and get more clients. Next week, we're going to talk about the Boston Heart Test and what you might want to know about it or why you might want to recommend it to people or go take it yourself, which I think is in the scope of practice, you know, not to like diet, like prescribe someone to go take it, but maybe just let people know about it. It was a test I did this year and I feel like it opened my eyes to what really goes into heart health. And we're going to talk a little bit about passion and obsession later this month. So Make sure you share the show with your friends, click the share button, uh, post it on your Facebook page, and mark your calendars, guys, next week, Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the mountains and noon on the East Coast and 9 a.m. if you're hanging out on the California coast where I used to live. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, even here, I've got to motivate myself to get out there and go into the mountains. You You can't have a gym in your home unless you walk through the door every morning, right? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Sweet. Let me just see if anyone else threw anything else up at the last second. Mandy says, happy people make the world, mean people hurt it. Sweet. I think we'll end on that note. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you next week. Yes, have a great week. <laughs>